Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another garden project. So today I'm going to be working on my drip irrigation system. I have a whole series of uh, videos showing you how to install a drip system from adding it to your faucet, putting it through your garden beds, and even using it to water your pots. But while drip irrigation is fabulous for watering when you're gone or even while you're home, you can set it up on a timer. It will automatically water every single plant on your property, just like mine does. You might be able to hear mine actually because all of my pots are currently running on my porch, my window boxes, my stuck tank garden around the side, which is currently a beautiful butterfly garden. It does need to be looked at sometimes. So today we are going to be troubleshooting a few of the most common problems that you can get with your drip irrigation. So first one is clogged drip irrigation. Once you've installed your drip, I like to come out at least once a day, if not every couple days, and just look at the garden. First of all, it's fun to watch and see things grow and bloom. And if we're not out here enjoying our gardens, what's the point of having them? But while you're enjoying your garden, you may also start to notice problems before they get so big that you can't fix them. So our first problem are these two pots. You may have noticed, like I did, that this one is big and beautiful and blooming and bushy and that this one's not bad, but it is a little far behind. So for a couple days, I just thought, well, this one must be getting more sun. He's a happier pot. Then I started looking into why else besides sun might this one be a little behind. And take a look, the drip irrigation is not running in this pot. Now the drip for this, these two pots comes up from the wall under my window boxes around and into both of these pots. So it hits this pot first and this pot second. So the fact that this pot is running means water is running past this pot and just not into the pot. Now I plumbed these last year, so sometimes you do need to replace emitters on a yearly basis, even if your most of your tubing and uh, connectors are going to last you quite a while. So I took a look and sure enough, I see water coming out of the back of this tube, but not into the actual emitters of this. So what I'm going to do, we're going to cut this off at the base here and we're going to see if water's coming out of it. If it is, all we need to do is add new emitters around the base. It's making a funny noise. I was just checking. It's fine. I hope, can you guys hear the kids playing behind me? If it is not coming out of my black quarter inch tube here, then we will have to just keep following it further back along the drip line until we come to the source of the problem. So first most common issue with your drip irrigation is something getting plugged and having to replace it. The easiest way to do that is to clip out the offending emitters and add in a new one, which is why drip irrigation is so much nicer than a soaker hose or a regular hose instead of having to replace the entire hose or splice it together with a metal connector, which will eventually be a weak spot, we can splice in a new piece of tubing and it is not a weak spot, it is just a continuation of the old system. So let me bring y'all in and show you this and then we will move on to fixing our second problem. All right, so moment of truth. Let's go ahead and you can see that there is water coming out right here. So I am going to guess that when we cut this, there will be water coming out of the black tube. Ugh, it's hard to do one-handed. There we go. Yep. Ah! <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I'm a mess. So there is, there's water coming out of this tube. So that means that I set this to turn off in a minute so it's, it should be winding down so that means that somewhere after the end of this black tube is the problem 
So instead of troubleshooting all three of the emitters in this pot, we are simply going to remove this ring and add a new one. All right, let's go ahead and we're just gonna cut it right here. Take this tube out. And now we are going to measure a new piece Ta-da! Put in a little emitter and add it into our pot. <clears throat> add in the black tubing. and connect the circuit. Perfect. Now, because this was only two or three small emitters, I figured it was easier just to cut out all three of them and replace all three emitters with new tubing. If this was a block in one of my larger drip tubes, say in my garden bed, I would want to find the emitter that was not working, cut that emitter out and replace just that section of tube with a new section. For now, we will consider this guy fixed. I'm going to go ahead and water him and then I will keep watching him over the next couple days. If he continues to struggle, we can always add an extra emitter to this pot. He might need more water than his friend. And that's okay too. Some plants like these impatients need a little more water. When these were struggling, I came in using a length of black tubing and I added an extra sprinkler head emitter to these three impatients. Now, instead of wilting, they are filling in. This one's almost tripled in size since we planted it and they are doing fabulously. So individual water, one of the best parts of a drip system. So if our little petunia doesn't perk back up, we will give him his very own large emitter. These are great because they are a one to 10 gallon ratio, meaning if I turn it smaller, they get less water. If I turn it bigger, they get more water and we can really customize how much water they get. Let's go ahead, head on to the porch for our next issue. All right, y'all. So my sad lavender plant, it's on the struggle bus. He is wilting really hard. And I noticed a few days ago, that he was so waterlogged he could hardly handle it so we're going to go ahead and put some drainage holes in the bottom of this pot i thought he had some but i actually uh was wrong he has none this guy does he's draining just fine and there is space underneath where water is getting out but this guy is just just literally waterlogged and so yeah we're going to go ahead and all I'm going to do is kind of bring them to the edge and I'm going to try drilling a hole, a few spaces in the bottom of this pot. Wish me luck. I'm sure there are 8 million better ways to do this, but this is the one I'm doing. Phase one. Honestly, I'm going to go ahead and let this drain completely as much as it can, and then I will drill two more holes on the other two sides. 
hopefully this guy will be much happier when he's not drowning. Let's go ahead and just leave this guy and we'll be back. All right, that is three new drain holes for our lavender. You can tell that he is really wilting even more than yesterday at the beginning of uh, this video. I was drilling the holes in the bottom of this guy and he took so long to drain that we lost the light. So it is now the second day, but we've got three drain holes in the bottom and hopefully he will be fixed before you know it. But that is the second problem that I often find with drip irrigation. If it is not too little water, it's too much water. So if your plant is not, is wilting, but you really can see, this guy is starting to have the same problem. Water sitting on top of the surface and not draining down through, then the problem is probably too much water. You can solve this a couple of different ways. In a pot like this one, you can drill some drainage holes. So I will probably do some for this guy just in a second. <laughs> Thought he had some, maybe he doesn't have some either. I think I would check these things. Don't do as I say, not as I do. In the landscape, if you are overwatering with say an emitter of some kind, you can always remove a few emitters near that plant or turn down the emitters if you're using a adjustable emitter. Some plants, especially once they're established, are very drought tolerant and need a lot less water in years two, three, four, five than they did in their first year. So they start wilting and the problem is not, not enough water. Problem might be too much water. Cut some out and see if that helps. We're gonna go ahead, head up the path over near our brand new Popster Hydrangea and work on the third issue. Okay, so the third issue I am always having with my drip system is adding drip to a new location. If, like me, you already used three or four different zones off your front faucet, two zones off your back faucet, you may not want to add a new zone, a new filter, a new project for every single area in your garden. For my front garden, I have one zone on the left of my front door, one on the right, this area around my tree is a third zone, and my fourth zone is all of the pots on my porch, the two white pots that we just did by my bench, and all of my window boxes. So when you're running a drip system, you want to keep the area you're doing fairly concise. The further you run your drip tube, the harder it's going to be to get the water all the way to the end. Anytime you can run a closed circuit, the easier the water will have from going from point A to point B. Instead of going all the way along one line and having to reach the end, it can go down two lines, meet in the middle, and the constant pressure will keep the water going. So, when I added these little plants to the right of my oak tree garden bed, I went ahead and I trenched right here a line the rocks and I brought my water over to these four plants. In doing so, I have reached the end of a line. So the water comes from my faucet all the way along my house, trenched underneath to my garden bed. I did trench it in two places. So it comes all the way across the front of my house, splits and goes in two places and comes in at the top and bottom of this garden bed to completely cover the entire garden bed. At the moment, it's only going from right down here across and then it hits one, two, three, four plants. I still want to add one more planter to the top of this little grouping 
if you haven't watched the video for these plants, I am trying to create just a little hedge right here that will stop your eye, fill in with big plants. These get six by six, 10 by four. These are big plants that will create a hedge, but that also means big plants, they need lots of water. So right now, instead of continuing to get all my water from this one spot all the way over, and instead of putting four plants on a whole new drip system, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to tap in right here. I'm going to trench across and I'm going to make this another circuit so that the water can come from this circuit all the way around with even pressure, it will come across, meet in the middle, and that will help my plants get more water easily without the system working so hard. And that is my third tip. When you are adding a new system to an existing system or a pot where you didn't have a pot before, instead of creating a whole new system, if you have to work with what you have, work smarter, not harder. And if you can only put in one drip line, go from the top. I don't know why I trenched at the bottom of the hill. Going uphill is always harder. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to move some rocks. I'm going to trench across and we will lay black quarter inch tubing from our system all the way across and then we will connect in good job Biddy to the tubing by our brand new pop star hydrangea then we will have water for days oh it is so humid out here today All right, so we've got our trench dug, and now we've used our little tool here to pop a hole in the large half inch drip tube. And we're going to pop our quarter inch drip tube right into that hole. Ta-da, connecting the two pieces. We've trenched underneath my edging. And now we're going to lay the quarter inch tube all the way down where we will connect it to the pop star and fill in the trench. And as much as I want all of my drip tubes covered by dirt eventually, I do leave the ones with emitters uh, exposed at least for a little bit until I'm sure that they are working, all the plants are getting enough water, and that I've added emitters or new tubes like this everywhere they need to go. Now we're going to have to work a little faster because uh, this water just turned on. Let's go ahead and get it connected and then we will get it buried. It's going to start coming out in this box. There we go. Yep. Now, all we need to do here is we can, we should be able to, yeah, cinch it, at least for now. Oh. All right. Sometimes. I have really good plans.
All right, so I've got this guy trenched in all the way over here. My very last step will be to connect it to the existing drip. So, right over here, I have a drip tube with a two gallon drip emitter. We are going to simply cut into that and splice this guy in. Let's go ahead and add in a T. We'll add this section right back to the other part we cut and our new piece will attach right here. I did have to turn the water off for this or else we'd be getting wet. That's all right. Turn it back on in a second. I am using landscape staples to kind of hold the, the drip tubing down in place so that it doesn't get all moved around but for the most part the dirt in these areas will hold it in place and since this is a walking area not a driving area it'll be fine got our tube and connect it All right, so now I have my two gallon emitter going right to the root ball of my plant. I've got my T that is going to lead right into the drip tube for my other plants. You can see the emitters there at the base of the Rose of Sharon. And we will simply cover over this drip tube so that it is not showing. And we're good to go. Like we were never here. And there it is, my top three tips for fixing problems with your drip irrigation. When you are troubleshooting, make sure you have eyes on your system every day. Watch your plants, listen to what they need. Do they have too little water, too much? Or do you need to add a bit more irrigation, a few more emitters to have your system work easier and your plants get the amount of water they need. Hope this helped you. Good luck in your garden. I will see you in the next video. If you wanna go back to the beginning and check out how I installed my drip system, click here. Bye y'all.